What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Tobin here. Thank you for joining us. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing if you like this video, if you like what you see. We would appreciate the support. Today's video is going to be a taxidermy video and I'm going to be doing, it's going to be over several days and I'm going to be doing a skull mount on a pronghorn antelope. Had a customer drop one off yesterday. Um, he, I, I guess, judging by how much skins in there, I think he must have, was going to do a um, shoulder mount and decided to go with the skull mount. So if you're new to the channel, uh, if you haven't watched our other channel before, we have a, we have another channel that's uh, more just about our family life, but uh, we're trying to transition taxidermy and hunting stuff onto this channel. But if you're not familiar, we own a seasonal part-time taxidermy business. We do uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of skull mounts each year. And this is the time where we start getting people dropping off heads that they've had in their freezer all summer because they're thinking about deer season and whatnot. Um, so uh, just finished up that longhorn back there, as you can see. Um, Should have done a video on that, but didn't. But uh, yeah, so real quick, um, I'm gonna kind of give you a rundown of what my plan is. I'm gonna skin this thing. Um, you may have seen a video in the past where I showed you all how to pop the horns off by bullying them off. I try not to do that anymore unless I really, really have to. Um, just heard some horror stories on split the horn splitting and coming apart, delaminating, stuff like that. So I try to sweat them off um, if, I, if time allows. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna skin that thing. I'm gonna put it into a black uh, trash bag. I'm gonna put it out here in the Texas heat for a couple days and the horns are just gonna pop right off. And then once that happens, I will take the head. Um, besides bears and hogs, Pronghorns are probably the greasiest animal that I've experienced in my experience. So I'm going to macerate that head in a bucket of water. Um, I have a maceration tank out here I use to speed things up, but this time of year, as hot as it is, I'll probably just put it in my little taxidermy shed right here. Um, and uh, it'll probably be it'll probably be macerated completely in a week or so. So um, if y'all aren't, like I said, if y'all aren't familiar, this is our little shop here. It's a 15 by 15. And then we have our little taxidermy shed right here next to it that we keep all our stuff in. And this is what we work out of. We do 90% of the heads that we work on. We work on them from November to uh, the beginning, like the last week of January. Um, so it, it's very seasonal. Um, we want to build a bigger shop and, and a bigger outfit soon. But right now we're pretty much doing, uh, we move the cars out and we do all of the work pretty much right here in our driveway. So um, this is where we keep everything especially in the off season buckets a few propane bottles pots for boiling burners power washers all that We've got a lot of taxidermy videos on our on our other channel like i said we're transitioning that to be just our family channel uh so i'm gonna read a lot of the videos lost my lot a lot of the videos that uh we have over there i'm gonna make newer ones to put on this channel throughout the year so uh, stay tuned for those but i'm gonna get that dude skinned i'm not gonna do it on camera youtube's weird about that kind of stuff so um i'll show y'all once i get it bagged up and and we'll go from there one thing i wanted to mention to you guys before uh, i get started um I had a lot of people ask me about skinning deer heads and if you're if you're a diy just doing a few a year on a, you know for yourself it's really not a big deal but if you're trying to do it on a production level try to do it as a side business um, one like this it has a whole cape with it and everything um, probably 10 minutes eight minutes ten minutes um, if it's already has the neck removed and all you're having to do is remove the hide and the jaw you know five or six minutes um, max um, during deer season the peak of, the, of our of our business uh, we will do 50 we'll skin 50 heads in one day and, and basically in two hours um, me and my son my two sons and my wife can do 50 in, in two hours um, and we I mean it's a production but but I'm just saying uh, think about how you're doing it um, and and there's always room to improve um, I basically uh, let's see if the next gone I'll cut a line down the jaw and then all I do is at from that point I'll remove the jaw off and then skin the top half of the head um, and if you're doing like a, an antelope or something that has horns, be careful, even a, a big long horn like that. Um, if you're using a sharp knife, when you start skinning around the base of those horns, you can cut the actual horns and damage them. So just wanted to tell you all that. So I'm gonna get started and I'll show y'all when I get done. 
All right, y'all. I got it bagged up out behind the shop here. Um, what I'll do is I would, you know, depend on where you live at, I would not recommend leaving that out overnight and having something carried off. So uh, what I typically do is set them outside the shop door here and then I'll stick it right inside the shop tonight and then put it back out in the morning. Let it sit in that direct sunlight for probably, for that antelope, probably, it may, I may be able to get them to pop off tomorrow, but I'll probably give it another day or two just to be safe and they'll pop off there. And uh, then I'm gonna go into water with them and macerate them. So I'll show y'all, when I get to that step, I'll, right, I'll show y'all again. Uh, I've had this pronghorn in the black bag out in the sun for about three days now. I'm almost certain the horns are gonna pop off. Uh, we're gonna find out. It's starting to rain here on us a little bit. It smells terrible, guys. Oh. Well, that was anticlimactic. Tell me what you're doing. I'm spraying. Uh, this is. That's good. That's good. This is fabuloso, half fabuloso, and half ammonia. That is to. Just to help it. help the smell. All right. Give me Danny. So I kind of I filled it up once with the fabuloso and ammonia concoction, and then. I sprayed some in there and then put, filled up with water. All right. Um, and then it was kind of nasty, so I let it kind of swish it around, dumped it out, and did that again. I'm, gonna let, I'm not going to leave those in there long. 30 minutes, an hour, take them out to help with the smell. And then this dude right here, I'm about to put him in the maceration tank, maybe. I don't I can, think you're going yeah, to. It's going to be 100 and... It's supposed to be 100 and... Three to 107 next week. So. Okay. Then so what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, my lovely wife is saying it's supposed to be hot next week, so I'm just gonna put him in my shed here, and a week or so it'll it'll be macerated completely. Um, the one thing about doing this is with that bag, the blood you skin it and the blood and stuff kind of soaks into the bone. Um, so doing the maceration is also gonna help pull that out of there, get all the skin off of it, and then. Next time you see us, we'll have all that done and we'll start whitening it and degreasing it a little more. So, all right, everybody, catch y'all later. So I've had that pronghorn just in my shed. Uh, I've had it in there for a few weeks now. I'm gonna pull it out and I'm not gonna video a whole lot of this. Um, it's really not much to it, but I'm gonna put it in a pot with water and clear dish soap and I'm gonna simmer it, keep it right on the edge of simmering and boiling for an hour or so to further degrease it, but it is very degreased now just by the maceration process, which pulls out a lot of fat and grease. So let me show y'all what it looks like. That's it right there. And I don't know if y'all can tell, but there is a, that's just fat and nastiness right there on top of that. As you can tell, I got a couple of deer in here as well. I'm gonna work on. So what I'll do is uh, I'm gonna take it over here. I got a little drain here next to my driveway. I'll get it out there and, and pour it out. And make sure when you do this, watch for teeth. You don't want to lose um, any teeth, and it's easy to do if you're not paying attention. So definitely look and watch. Uh, you know, look at the head and make sure it has all the teeth. If you're missing one, you got to dig through there and find it. Um, you know having forceps and pliers and different stuff like that makes the job a little bit easier but I'm gonna pour it out and get everything out of there and make sure I got all the teeth intact and then I'm gonna go into a pot um, Water clear dish soap. I'm gonna probably do those deer and do it all at one time I'm gonna simmer it for a while and then uh, once I pull it out I'll show you all what it looks like when we get to that point All right Had these I want to show you all real quick had these uh, simmering here um, I don't I, I haven't timed it, but I'm getting close to an hour. I would think I'll probably let them go a little bit longer um, Trying to keep them about at this right here. Maybe a little bit less of a boil than that um, But I wanted to show you all right in here That's all well, My camera's fogging up. That's all Grease and fat right there that is pulling out 
um, antelope, pronghorn antelope are very greasy. And I think going forward, I'm only gonna do the maceration process on them rather than just uh, going straight to a boil with them. Uh, the amount of fat that was on the top of that bucket earlier was um, on top of the water in the bucket earlier was crazy. I mean, that's a lot of fat that it sucked out of there. And you're definitely not going to get that much out if you go straight in the boil with it. Uh, it's not going to suck that much out of there. So giving it a couple extra weeks to just sit there and go through that process and pull that fat out of there is, uh, I think, going to be a better, you know, better result in the end. So um, I'm going to pull these out of here here shortly, hit them with a water hose, get them rinsed off, put them out in the sun, let them dry, and then we'll go to whitening them. Uh, I don't know if we'll do it today, but we'll do it soon. We'll show you all that part. All right, y'all. <clears throat> kind of got on autopilot and forgot to video the whitening, but it just got done. My beautiful wife is doing is our whitener, and she's doing this deer now. Kind of see the get the gist of what she's doing. Go out here and show y'all the pronghorn. It's already gotten whiter significantly wider since she put that on there so we're using <clears throat> whitening this powder lightener with 40 volume cream and it's for how many like well so it's it's okay give me a second I wrote it on this. Three parts powder. Six parts creamer. So if you're using one part, no, one part powder, two parts creamer. So no. for one scoop, and it doesn't yeah, really yeah. matter. You just want to make sure it's even. So for every one scoop of powder, it's two scoops of creamer. Yeah. So. And <clears throat> you can <clears throat> get that at your um, online or at your local beauty supply store. So what we're gonna do is, we've got these other deer we're working on. Uh, she's gonna put it on there. We're gonna put it out in the sun this evening and again tomorrow, and then we'll rinse them off tomorrow evening. So about 24 hours, this time of year with 110 degree temperatures, it's not gonna take long. Uh, the heat will really help activate it and make it work. Um, so next time you see it, we'll have it whitened and probably cleaned off. And then we'll show y'all how to put these horn sheets back on there and then how we're gonna mount on the plaque. So, stay tuned. All right, everybody. Inside, because it's still hotter than the surface of the sun outside. Um, about to glue the horns onto this antelope. Let me show you all here. They both fit back on there fine with no uh, trimming or anything. So, all I'm gonna do is, sometimes I use Bondo my, I don't, I'm out of Bondo, so I'm just going to use some Gorilla Glue. This is kind of a, um, it's kind of a gel type glue, and I got about a half a ball of it here. I'll probably use most of it. I'm just going to go um, around the, the horn cores here, and then just slide them on over it like that. And then I'll probably turn it upside down, and um, you know, let some go down inside there as well. And I'm going to let it sit probably overnight and make sure all this stuff dries, because I don't want to turn it upside, you know, right side up, and then have that glue come running back out down the skull. So, uh, I'm not really gonna show you all that part, but that's all I'm gonna do. After it dries, we'll put it on a plaque. All right, y'all, it's been, it's been a couple hours. I went ahead and just gave it a couple hours, and I think the glue's pretty well dried, so I'm gonna get this thing on a plaque. Um, we order all our plaques from the Taxidermist Woodshop in Wichita Falls, Texas. And we got a real nice three piece, like pedestal type plaque here. We're gonna throw it on there real quick. Right out here, the shop's finally cooling off outside. It's almost dark. It's probably it's still over 100. Uh, got it finished. Uh, I did glue, put a rubber band on it, and glue the nose back. Like it didn't fall off, but it was just a little separated. And I glued it back just probably for good measure. This part right here where it's separated is not gonna go back. Um, it's just, that's how it is, but I um, think it came out pretty good overall. All 
All right, y'all. Hope y'all liked this video. Um, let me know if, if y'all do your own skull mounts. Do you do them as a business or do you do them as uh, just for your own, as a hobby? Um, we appreciate the support. We appreciate y'all following us. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, please comment. And we'll see y'all again.